So let's look at this expression here. What's something we could do to simplify this one? Ready? Well, you can do a distributive property and you do a negative 3 times 4x and then negative 3 times negative 5. Very good. So we'll distribute that negative 3x. So this will be 7x plus 5. Very good. Now subtracting 3 from 5 and getting 2. That's not the way that works. Negative 3 times 4x is negative 12x. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15 plus 10. So far so good? OK. What's something now that we can do? Johnny? Uh, you can combine add that 2x's and get negative 5x. OK, 7x so minus 12x, negative 5x. Go ahead and throw a bunch of other stuff together as well. John? Uh, you can put the 5, 15, and 10 together. Yeah. 5, 30. Negative 5x plus 30. All right, how'd that go? Good, good, good. good. Pretty good. All right. Uh, next one. Somebody new? Yes, Cadence. I'm going to times x by 2x. Uh-huh. And x by 36. Gives us? Uh, x, 2x, minus um, 6x. Uh, that seems kind of funny. Just notice real quick evidence of why this is kind of fishy. x times 2x is 2x, so we get an x term here, but x times negative 6, no x here on the 6, that's also just an x term. Okay, we got an x term times an x term. You're going to pass it out to somebody else? She'll look around and pick somebody with her hand up. Square. Square. Get it? Is that ringing a bell? Yeah. Okay. So that, let, let's just take a look at that over to the side here. X times 2x. Agreed? That's what we're talking about. X times 2x. Okay, which is x times 2 times x. It's just the three things being multiplied together. I'll put these, rearrange them in this order, right? Because when I multiply, I can multiply in any order. 2 times 3 times 5 is the same as 2 times 5 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2 times 5. It doesn't matter what order we multiply in. All right? And x times x. There's this notation called exponent notation. This is just a shorter way of saying I'm multiplying this number by itself. Right? So 2x squared. All right, 2x squared minus 6x. All this stuff is the same. Plus 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. John's already answered. Josie? Um, you would combine the negative 9x and the negative 6x to get negative 15x. Okay, those are like terms negative 15x. And then you can combine the positive 12 and the negative 8 and get the positive 4. Uh -huh. And then you're just left with 2x squared. Squared, yes, 2x squared. 2 times x squared. Okay, questions about any of that? Okay, let's look at the homework. There are the answers. Take a look. Take a gander. What you're doing, if you have a mistake, you're looking for it, trying to figure out why the mistake was made, or if you can't figure out what's going on. Are there any questions about any of these, Josie? How did you get the negative 12x squared? I can get the 12x, but I didn't get the square. Okay. Uh, this is very tiny. Negative 
3x times x squared plus 4x minus 2. All right. Uh, so we've got a question about where the square comes from. So I'm going to distribute the negative 3x, right? I'll agree on that. All right. So let's just write it out the long way, and then we'll see how that, all that stuff happens. So negative 3x times x squared. I'm just going to write that. Negative 3x times x squared. All right. Plus negative 3x times 4x. So plus a negative 3x times a 4x plus a negative 3x times a negative 2. So whenever there's a negative, I like to use parentheses when I mean multiply so that that negative stays there. All right, so coming through here, uh, negative 3 times x times x squared. What's x, well, what does x squared mean? Sean? x times itself. x times itself, okay, so that's what x squared is. Uh, and then we're multiplying, right, multiplying that by another x. So how can I write x times x times x? Saga? x cubed. x cubed, so negative 3x cubed. All right, so that looks pretty done. Plus a negative 3 times x times 4 times x. Okay, I'm going to kind of put an in-between step here. How about negative 3 times 4 times x times x. The negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And what's x times x? How do we write that? x squared. x squared. There's our x squared, right? OK? And then negative 3x times negative 2. Well, that's positive, so we're going to add a positive 6x. That's where the x squared comes from. Other questions? No questions, or you're saying to me is you're ready to just show you got this down pat. You can just do it on your own correctly, no mistakes. Is that how we feel about it? Yes? Number 11. Number 11, I will do in purple. Negative 7x times negative 3x plus 5 plus 3 times 8x. So you can see here, is this a minus? Yeah. Minus 7 plus 10x. We, what we see is we have two sets of parentheses, each getting multiplied by their own thing. Right? We've got like double distribution here. Two distributions. All right. So here I'm going to distribute the negative 7x into this parentheses. Here I'm going to distribute the 3 into this parentheses. Can we do all that at once? Is that going to confuse? No. Yeah, ready to go? Okay. Negative 7x times negative 3x. I won't write it out the long way like I did here, but you could reference this if you get confused by it at all. But I have negative 7x times negative 3x. It's kind of like this. I have an x times an x here. So negative 7x times negative 3x. Negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. x times x is x squared. Negative 7x times positive 5 is negative 35x. All right, and so that's what we get when we distribute the negative 7x. Plus whatever this stuff is. 3 times 8x is 24x. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Okay, we distributed the 3. Plus 10x. So we got x squared. Let's see, do we have any other x squareds that we can put together with these x squareds? Nope, that's the only x squared around. So, there we go. Here is uh, a bunch of x's, right? Negative 35 of them. Then we have 24 more of those and 10 more of those. Um, I'm going to say 24x plus 10x is 34x. 34x minus 35x is how many x? Negative 1x. Negative 1x. Negative x. Um, and then this is the only just ones, right? Do the x squareds, the x's, and the ones. Here are the ones. There's negative 21 of those. There we go. Did we clear it up? Okay. Monica? Minus 4x plus 2 
2. All right, distributing the 2x, 2x, both of these, we get 10. All right, 2 times 5 is 10, x times x is x squared. 2x times negative 7, negative 14x. That's been distributed. If I could like combine any of the things that were the same here, I would, but there aren't. So I'm just going to write it down again. Now we have a 10x squared, we have 1x squared, all together we have 11 of those x squareds. Negative uh, 14x minus 4x, negative 18x plus 2. Alex? Why is an 11x to the fourth power? Because it's x with two times and then two more x's. So okay. that pays the fourth power? So why isn't? Take a different color. I'm just going to kind of section this off. Y isn't 10x squared plus x squared equal, and y isn't it equal to 11x to the fourth? Right. Now, if 10x to the, if 10x squared plus x squared was 11x to the fourth, then by the same reasoning, we didn't ask this, right? Negative 14x minus 4x should, by this logic, be negative 18x squared, right? It's not. And you didn't ask that question for the x's, right? So uh, the reason is, let's say, it, let, let's break it down to an, in, a simpler problem. If 10x squared plus x squared was 11x to the fourth, what would x squared plus x squared be? Well, that's, I mean, following kind of the same logic as this. Maybe 2x to the fourth. Okay. There's no, I mean, to add these together and get x to the fourth, it's not correct. So to say what it would be, it's, you know, it's kind of an, an imaginary land because it's just not this way. Let's, let's get rid of the two. Let's just see, because what you're wanting to do, Alex, is put that power of four on there. I'm going to show you why that's not the case. So let's talk about x to the fourth. What does x to the fourth mean? x times x times x times x. Uh -huh. Let's see if when we're adding them, we wind up with that. Well, what's x squared? x times x. x times x. And what's x squared? x times x. And hey, I mean, there's four x's and there's four x's. Certainly seems legit. But what are we doing with this x squared and this x squared? Adding them. Adding them. Oh, okay. Right? If instead we were multiplying, multiplying instead, now we've got something. Oh, okay. But they're not being added. They're not being multiplied, they're being added together. So if 10x squared times x squared, then that would be 10x, I mean 11x to the fourth power? Well, oh. no. Uh, what would 10x squared times 10x squared be? It would be 10x squared times x squared. Okay, let's see what we get there. Well, it's just 10 times, well, x squared is x times x, times x times x, times, right, that's this times right here. x squared is x times x. Let's see what we have. We don't have 11, we just have 10. We're just multiplying yeah. together. We still have 10. But what is x times x times x times x? So it's not 11x to the fourth, it's 10x to the fourth. No, no collecting, and now we have 11 of them. It's 10 times 4x's, 10x to the fourth. How's that? Okay? You ready? Okay, let's clear our desks. Make them look like this. No book, no phone, no notebook. You shouldn't need a calculator. I mean, this is uh, the hardest thing that we do here is multiply a couple of numbers together, so you should be fine. Thing. We don't really need it. If you feel like you need one, you can use one, but it's just not necessary. Uh, if you do have a calculator and want to use it, go ahead. Take out your own piece of paper, this paper that you borrow. Now, now, keep in mind, I'm going to collect these, grade them, and give them back to you. And I would expect 
the wise student hold on to that. Okay? They have something to refer to. Having your own work to refer to, especially when it highlights your mistakes, is a very, very useful thing to have. All right? So don't just rip a piece of paper out of your three ring binder and then make it not very easy to receive back and hold on to. Sorry, that's just a bad idea. Together. All right, so I'm going to distribute this negative 2. That's going to put me at uh, negative 2 times negative 7x is a positive 14x. Negative 2 times 3, negative 6, minus 5, minus 2x. Um, I'm to the point of just collecting like terms now. There's no parentheses or multiplication to do. We're just adding and subtracting things that are the same. So we have 14x's minus 2x's. That leaves us with 12x's. We have 8 minus 6. We're at 2. Minus 5, that's a negative 3. One, I see this distribution. I'm going to go ahead and distribute. Okay, so 3x times negative 4x and 3x times 2. 5x squared plus 1. Negative 3x times negative 4x is a negative 12x squared. Remember when we multiply an x by an x, we get x squared. 3x times 2, 6x minus 6x. So we have 5x squared minus 12x squared. That's negative 7x squared. Uh, here we have 6x minus 6x, so we have 0x's, plus that one right there, that's all there is, negative 7x squared plus 1. Okay? Questions? How did we do? Good. Did it all right? Good? Okay. All right, so let's get our notes back out. I made you put them away, and you're going to have to do that a lot of time. So I showed you this last time, I showed you kind of what algebra looks like. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. So today, um, we could swing into equations, which is kind of where the book wants us to go, but I never liked books. So what we're going to do is we're going to dabble a little bit more in functions, maybe a little bit into the quadratic functions, also a little bit of cubic functions, okay? And if we have some time, we're going to look at graphs as well, okay? Or this may wind up being a little bit of homework. But I want you to see the books often show you these connections. I want to show you these connections, that all these things that we do, they're, they're, they're usually weeks apart. They have this connection. They're all the same kind of thing. Okay, So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take three different functions. And I will do my best in this quick dabbling to make clear what functions are. If I can find my notes. There you go. I'm going to show you three functions. Let's look at this function and copy all of these down. Say 3x minus 2. Okay. Uh, here's another function. Hmm. Now this is getting confusing. See, this is a y equals 3x minus 2. That's a little confusing because if I write y equals, now this, well, no, not. Is the same y? They're not supposed to be. Okay? So I'm going to give them different names. Different names. Follow this one. Now they do the same job. I mean, x, y, x, f. Now instead of calling it y, just calling it f. Just a different name. Just giving it a different name. Okay, this one, g. Okay? Um, this one's going to be 2x squared plus 6x minus 1. Let's call this one h. That's going to be x cubed. You should be writing these down as I write these down. Right. 
in essence, all we're going to put to the, t to the test here of our abilities and our knowledge is, uh, you know, do we know the order of operations, really? Okay? Or can we follow that order that we agreed on? What I want you to do with each of these is, uh, you know, you want to kind of spread these apart, keep these spread out. I want you to fill out a table. Have you guys seen a table like this before? Yeah. Okay. But instead of X and Y, which it usually is, since we have three different things and we gave them three different names, this one will just be an XF chart. This will be an XG chart. Okay. This will be an XH chart. Okay. I just want you to fill out this chart for all of them. We'll have the same X's. You plug in the same X's into all of them. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's, uh, that's a lot, that's more than I thought it would be. Let's get rid of the negative four. So, for every one of these, let's go negative three, negative two, one, zero, one, and two. Shouldn't take you long here, a little longer here, should take you a while on this one. Is everybody clear on what I mean by this? No, okay. So this chart, these are the x values. Right? You have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Okay. For this one, you're going to take individually, one by one, you're going to do this six different times. Negative three, and plug it in for x. Okay. Oh. Let me show you what you should get. You should get negative 11. Okay? Because three times negative three minus two, negative nine minus two, negative 11. And we come along and do it again, we get rid of the negative three, we do instead negative two, and so on, and so on, and so on. Then we do the same thing for this function and for this function. Does that make more sense? Yes. Yeah. All right, good. So two times negative three squared plus six times negative three minus one. I like to use parentheses so that I can view it as like this gets plugged into x. Now, exponents before multiplication. So not six or negative six squared. It's not six, it is negative three squared. Negative three times negative three, which is positive nine. Two times nine. Six times negative three, negative 18. Minus one, we have 18. Minus 18, minus one, zero, negative one. So negative three gives me negative one. Make sure you do that exponents first. Don't combine those numbers and then you take it to an exponent. And uh, that should have been our bell. Okay? Have a good day. Have a good weekend.